Good afternoon, Luke Moroni. Yes, it is that time again. How are you doing, man? Um, I'm happy you, you acknowledge it as that time because some of us are really, really consistent. I see Stephen Seddon. How are you going? Robert Broker. Happy Monday, my friend. Raz George. Thank you so much for tuning in. Maini Homa. Thank you so much for tuning in. How was your weekend, guys? Let me know how you uh, spend your weekend. I had a surprise visit uh, from uh, Stephen Kelly. He's still in town. We had a couple of drinks yesterday and we talked strategy and how 2018 is going to look like. All right. So for those that are just tuning in for the first time, my name is Prosper Tarovinga. And I viscerally believe that if you're an online uh, business person, your business should be profitable and enjoyable. And I also believe that if you're going to be running Running a business, it should be able to create for and relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of. And I believe that every human being should be able to leave, learn and contribute, um, you know, to the greater good of humanity. So my uh, work really involves helping um, invent a remarkable products and services and be helping you to be able to tell stories around them. All right. So basically, I teach a simple four step system that is designed to help uh, coaches, consultants, service professionals, and, um, you know, for you to be able to package a brand, um, your services so that your business is profitable and enjoyable. I also help small businesses like yourself, um, essentially through digital marketing strategies. And uh, what I do basically is help you curate an online footprint and you can optimize your business for growth and for profit. So every uh, single day, Monday to Thursday now, for 30 minutes, we sit down and we discuss how we can help you earn more money with less struggle. Now, since last week on Friday, we now have introduced a Friday Q&A that has been aptly named Ask and Prosper, where you ask questions and I answer them, all right? So I will be helping you develop systems throughout the week and you are um, able to then interact with me every uh, Friday where you can ask me questions. So depending on where you are, it's Friday 2 p.m. AEST, so you could come around on a Thursday, check that and mark it in your calendars, all right? So I basically want to help you generate more revenue and basically work around the clock um, with your PR and branding. And if you're tuning in for the first time, guys, um, grab a notebook. Today, we're going to be talking about personal branding and how it can actually help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Sandy Walker, congratulations and welcome back. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Look, Moroni, you were playing tennis over the weekend. Did you win, my man? Thank you so much. All right. So... Without, without further ado, I really want to bring something uh, to the table that a lot of people might be ignoring or not really understanding because they have been sold onto a story which they believe and it will make them feel very stupid to stop believing that story. People buy from those that they know, like and trust. And for you to be able to purchase, um, I mean, for you to be able to sell anything that you're selling to people, you gotta have people's attention first. Now, how do you get people's attention? We are wired to listen to stories. And from those stories, we can then decode those stories and tell ourselves our own lies about that story. All right, I'm going to say that again, because when you tell your story, people then decode it in such a way that it makes sense according to their own worldview. You cannot convince anyone to do anything that they haven't convinced themselves that they want to do. So you better have a story that aligns to the way they view the world, the way they value their life, to the way they actually see and perceive themselves as a human being. Some stories that we have been told are so much of a lie that we cannot untell those stories. Uh, once again, I was watching a documentary over the weekend and it was telling us about how cancer is actually caused not by, um, um, you know, the sun or anything else around us. I mean, it does have an effect, but the food that we're eating, the meat, the milk, 
All of those things are causing um, cancer. But we were brought up knowing that you get protein from meat, you get uh, calcium and whatever goodies from milk, all right? And we're the only animals that actually use another animal's product, you know, to nourish our kids and to nourish, um, you know, our own bodies. So all of those things, that is a big story that we were told and we believed that lie and now it's hard for us to unbelieve that same lie. And as much as anyone who is a marketer has to be telling whatever story in order for their consumers to actually, um, you know, take that story on and then they can share it and pass it on to their kids, to their relatives, to their um, whoever is willing to listen. So that's where branding becomes a crucial component of any success that you can do, especially in the online space. People need a story to run with. People need to believe something. People need to understand who you are and how you can help them. So that's why branding is such a crucial component to your own success. I see Nicole is in the house. Thank you so much for tuning in. Steven Seaton, I don't know if I acknowledge you, but thank you so much, brother. Think of some of the biggest companies in the world, all right? Think of, um, you know, Nike. You just remember their swoosh icon. You know, Apple is that half-eaten apple. It's, it's something you don't have to think about as soon as you see, even if you see half of that brand. Everyone is familiar to the story that they have created out of those brands. Now, you want to ask yourself, what story are you telling to your immediate audience so that they can run with it? And then, in, 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 you know, it influence other people to understand who you are and what you actually stand for. Petra, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. All right. So today, instead of you running around and trying to market to the mass market, you need to appeal to a few people that actually buy your own story. All right. Um, here's a very simple example of what the market actually looks like. If you look at your small finger there, it is divided into three sections. What? One which is closest to the hand and the middle section and then the other one which is furthest from the hand. Now this section that is closest to the hand is the people that are the early adopters, people that absolutely understand, know your story and will be ambassadors and brand ambassadors for your story. Now, the middle section represents the mass market. These are people that are already purchasing the product that you are purchasing, I mean, that you're trying to sell, but they're buying it from somebody else, which means they have bought that other person's story, and it's going to be hard for you to reach to this part if you haven't convinced a fair amount of people that can infiltrate this section of the market. Now, this end section of the market, which is large but you know further from you which is you representing your hand representing your brand this section of the market represents the laggards people that don't care about what you're selling people that don't even care whether they know you or they don't they just want a service or product that works all right now your mission as a marketer is to make sure that your brand story moves from these people here infiltrate the mass market and then also win the hearts of the laggards but what we're doing as people is we're trying to take our story and take it all the way here before having ambassadors before having people that can actually um you know send out that message and help us infiltrate all the other markets and that's why a lot of people are just crushing and burning because there's no strategy there's no branding that is being put into this first section that is closer to you now you need to find out what are your values you need to find out what is that story that people can buy into so that they can tell their friends and their relatives and all that is done through your own personal brand what are you known for all right, I always ask this question for those people um, that are constantly watching my, um, you know, my, my, uh, my life feeds. Today, building your own personal brand is just as important as you are building your company's brand. And in fact, it's actually the most important thing because you know what your customers want? They want to hear the story about who founded the company. They want to know your failures. They want to know your struggles. They want you to justify their failures. They want you to encourage their dreams. 
They want you to confirm their suspicions about the market already. They want you to ally with their fears because they're already afraid of what is out there. And they want you to help them throw rocks at their own enemies. But you only do that if you've gotten their attention. And how do you get their attention? By telling your story. And your story then becomes your brand. Now, your story is not where you were born, uh, what trial, trials and tribulations you went through, but your story is how are you being perceived on the market? How do you appear? How consistent are you? How are you helping people by actually helping them? All of that constitutes part of what your story is. Are you visible enough for when people are searching for you? You know? Are you showing your real, authentic self on social media? Are you relatable? All right. Do you actually understand the industry that you are talking about? Do you actually know what you're talking about? Are you well versed with the information? Do you believe your own story that you're peddling out there? Do you know what I mean? Are you networking enough so that people can actually know who you are and what it is that you stand for and how you can help them by actually helping them? Sharon Starr, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. Right? Are you maintaining contact with the con with the with the with the um, audience that you are trying to reach out for? Are you creating for them and relating to them and answering their own questions? Are you becoming the source that can actually be relied on for relevant information? Uh, is any of that present in your current business or in your branding strategies at the moment? Do you have a unique a value proposition, something that totally sets you apart from the whole market? Are you giving back? Because we're here to live, we're here to contribute. I mean, we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. All right. And if you're not contributing to the greater good of humanity, what's in it for them to pay attention to you? So those are the things that you should really, really look out for in 2018, all right? And I'm going to try and break them down a little bit just for those people that just wanted to find out the gist of the show. Now I'm going to unpack it so that you can actually understand where do you need to be, what do you need to be saying, and who do you need to become in order for people to value you and see you as the go-to person in 2018. Because without that, either you're just... um making a lot of noise because you either influence people or you affect them. So what is it that you're going to be doing in 2018? Are you going to be a high sounding nothing or are you going to be somebody with a brand that people are willing to share your story? Because without people talking about you, let's, let's face the facts. You are basically without a business. A lot of our businesses, a lot of people that have online presence, if they stop working within their business, their business does not last until Friday. So what are you doing to earn back that time in order for you to continuously give, in order for you to continuously be relevant within the industry? You know, so when you're building your business, it is actually important for you to look at um, you know, your, 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 your own personal brand. Are you being relatable enough that people want to share you with those that they trust? All right. You know what I mean? And Steven Siddon says, become part of your brand. You would have to tell that story, a story that is shareable. Because if people are not talking about you, if people are not creating that word of mouth, you are good as grand opening, grand closing. You know, there's a whole big influencer marketing that's going out there where you can use other people that have already crafted their own personal brand so that you can get into their own audience. All right. In 2018, that's also part of the strategy that I'm going to be using for my business, of which I've already started doing that by interviewing people that are relevant within, you know, certain industries. Now, what happens when I interview those people, I get to hear their story, I share them with you, my audience, and I also penetrate their own audience. And in 2018, my business is going to be launching a new division, um, Live Long Influencers. You know, so if you're a current influencer and you know a thing or two about your industry, let me know so that we can work together. And you know what? What is going to make this simple in part? It's the personal brand that I have built that now gives people the permission to talk about uh, the relevance of what they're going to create themselves. 
I've created and developed contacts over the years with large brands, agencies, and other influencers, and it has also helped propel, you know, the level of, of, of contacts that I can share amongst my clients and my own audience as well. So I'm helping people to tell their own stories. Yes, like what Stephen Seddon says, help people tell their own stories. You know, so that's why I'm going to be giving you the seven and a half tips that are going to help you bring, build a really strong brand um, in the next year. Remember, your clients are no longer looking, um, you know, at, 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 at a particular logo. A lot of us are appearing on social media without our face, people not knowing who we are, not really connecting to the audience we are trying to get money from. So if you're not showing yourself to the audience you're, 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 you're demanding money off of, do you think they're going to part with their credit card? I don't think so, brother. Leslie, uh, Noah, thank you so much for tuning in. Can you type in the comments where you're tuning in from? You know? So one thing that you've got to do, and I always repeat this, the closest you are to the camera in 2018, the closest you are to the bank. Be visible be a sex um, and, 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 and accessible. If people can know that they can get a hold of you, if people know that they can touch the hem and are able to ask questions off of you and be around you and immerse in your knowledge, in your, in your energy, in your aura, guess what's going to happen? They're going to want to share you to their friends as well because then they know their friends are not going to be disappointed. You're going to be there for them in as much as you've been there for, 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 for them in person. You can't hide in your office or behind your computer and expect to build a personal brand anymore. Because people, either they are searching for you or they don't care. So out of sight, out of mind. All right? So you need to get out there and make yourself, you know, visible and accessible. How are you going to help me if I cannot get a hold of you? Or if I make a purchase from your website, how do I know that if something goes wrong with that purchase, I can reach you and call you and you can fix it for me without any squabbles? Nobody wants to buy something that they're going to have to jump through hoops in order for it to be fixed for them. You know, so that's how you create a personal brand by being visible. Because then now you justify, you know, your, your own existence and then people don't have to worry about purchasing anything from you because they know they can reach out to you. Can you imagine me being live like this and I haven't been truthful to a client or so? How much would it take me off balance if, just, if somebody just types in, hey Prosper, your marketing does not work. Um, we tried it and it's not working. So you want to make sure that you are accessible and people can actually see that you can help them by actually helping them. You know, even if you're an introvert, attend conferences or if you're in groups, try to be of value as much as you can. You know, you need to network, you need to socialize and make sure that your social media profiles are actually open to the public and they allow incoming messages. You know? People need to know that they can reach you at any time if they have a problem. Moms, how are you doing, mama? I hope you had a fantastic weekend. So you can do like what I'll be doing every, every Friday and suing from now on. Hold Q&A sessions. You know what I mean? Because people always have questions or on your website have frequently asked questions and interact with the people that are going to be supplying you with the money that you, you want to build your own empire. Because how are people going to part with the money when they don't know, first of all, where the money is going, what it's supporting, and, 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 and how they're going to be benefiting, or do they have to keep jumping hoops in order to be in touch with you? The more visible you are and the more accessible you make yourself, the stronger your personal brand becomes. Like I said, out of sight, out of mind. So if you are not seen or if people don't know how you look like or what to expect off of you, don't expect them to send out their, um, you know, their um, uh, credit card without, you know, them questioning anything. All right. And in the process, people can always find and discover if you're not being authentic. People would always find and discover if you're not telling the real story about who you actually are. Because some people, they get caught up in trying to become the guru or the expert and then they get caught up within themselves with what is called um, uh, imposter syndrome. All right. So what does that do? It stops you from delivering. It stops you from shipping. And then you stop being seen. 
Be yourself, brother. Be yourself, sister. All right? You know, don't try and just have, um, you know, social uh, media or whatever, your Facebook, your LinkedIn or your Twitter as a 100% marketing channel. People like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. All right? So you don't want to be spraying and praying to an empty theater. You really want to be connecting with people. Use social media for what it's actually supposed to be. Social. All right? No, I mean, it's fine to throw an offer here and there and promote your company occasionally, but focus on the real you, your story, your, your, your trials, your tribulations, because those are the stories that people share, you know? And if you come across as a robot or you're, you're unauthentic, it, it's quite funny. Everybody knows my daughter. Everybody knows my wife. Everybody knows a thing or two about what I do. It doesn't, you know, we are all caught up in the ego of saying, I don't want to be too public. But guess what? People will only consume the stuff that you give out to them. Nobody cares in searching your pictures from 2008 or in 1996. People are too busy, caught up in their own lives as well. You know, but if you show them that little bit, it, it brings you closer to them. They like to see the other side. You know, because then that becomes part of the experience of you being um, of service to them. You might not know the way you've set up your room. I've had a few people saying, oh, my God, I didn't know I can use the cupboard door as, as a whiteboard, um, you know, um, as a whiteboard. Subtle things like that can actually enhance somebody's way of life because I'm showing up. So what do you do on weekends, where you eat, what your hobbies are? It's all the information that people are, are, are picking up on so that they too can actually survive in this difficult world. It's not easy, guys, to actually be, um, you know, you know, out there. It's hard as hell. So you want to make every person that interacts with you, you know, enjoy something and, and, and it becomes a distraction to the hardship that they're going through in their life. And guess where they put you now? In a good light. So this makes you appear more human, which attracts more people to you. Instead of you being inauthentic and being a robot and, you know, regurgitating other people's content. And like what Steven said and says, putting out fresh content, you make it easy for people to reach out to you. Good day, Nicole Sanders. I can't wait to see you tomorrow, my love. Tomorrow is going to be fantastic, by the way. If you're going to be in, uh, uh, if you're going to be in Melbourne, we are hosting a networking uh, with the Bloom uh, Network Group. Nicole, can you put the link uh, to where we're going tomorrow so that if there's some people that want to join and pick up tickets, then they can. All right. So, yes, if you're going to be around, then you can also touch the hem and get to meet me in person. All right. So at the end of the day. Once you start knowing who you are as a person, it's easier for other people to relate to that person. We do not, we, we, people already have all they want. You know what people actually buy? People buy the story. All right. People don't buy products, goods or services. They buy the connection or the story behind what they've just purchased. You know? If you look at all the things that we're buying, we buy cars before our cars are even finished. We buy new clothes before these clothes are, you know, are beyond repair. It's because we're buying into the story that we're being told by the marketer. So what story are people buying into that you are telling? Because if you're not spreading a story or you're not putting people closer to you, you can never reach this segment of the market, which is the mass market. You can never reach the laggards, these people that are already doing what you're selling, but they're listening to somebody else's story that is not you within your industry. Your point is to make sure that your story is heard by this section of the market, because then they know you, like you, and trust you. And in that no like and trust, they can then spread the message towards this middle section, which is, um, you know, the, the people that are not early adopters, but the mass market. We are all trying to reach this section of the market without realizing that, look at this, we have so many stages to reach out. All right. So what are you doing? What story are you telling in 2018 about who you are? 
about how you can help your customers, about how they can connect with you in order for you to take them away from their pain and, and, and deliver them from all evil. All right? It might sound like a lecture or whatever it is, but you really got to make sure that you've got your personal branding in check. You know? And at the end of the day, once you've gotten the people around who you are, I mean, around the, the story that you're telling, it's a two-way process. You know, it's a two way process. A lot of people are networking the wrong way. They're only focusing on what's in it for me and their personal benefit. G'day, Steven, man. How's it going? I was just talking about you. You know, you, you, you're doing it. You're doing it wrong if you're not, you know, really, really putting the emphasis on how can the other person benefit from my existence. All right. And whatever story you're telling, it has to correspond with the worldview of the person you're telling. Not everyone is your customer. So focus on actually helping those people that want to be known, um, that want to hear that story, and then just foster that with them. You know? And the more connections you start having, the closer you get to the real market, which is the middle part here. And I'm going to keep re repeating this re re reference because your hands have so many lessons in them. First of all, if you look at the size of the fingers or the height of the fingers, not every finger has the same height. So you can't keep trying to bring people to your story if they don't believe your worldview. Find those people that are closer to you. And then they can influence other people to buy into your story so they can reach out to the rest of the market, which are the laggards here. Stop trying to reach and encompass the whole market and do it only for two days and expect a return on your investment. All right. And once you've started, you know, crafting and, 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 and putting those audiences and those people together, make sure you consistently are giving them a story to tell. Because people are coming to the internet to get information. So if your brand becomes that, um, you know, source of information, you become, you know, they get to know you, like you, and trust you. And that's the way you'll be easily shared. Instead of you talking about what you're selling and, and what you're good at or what your benefits are. Become a trusted source of either news that are happening within your industry and relevant information that will help your audience. Chennai, how are you doing, my love? Thank you so much for tuning in. And Langton, thank you so much for tuning in, brother. All right? Because, you know what? Your personal brand is strong when you become a source of information. People are coming and they're searching for answers. And if you're the person that's providing those answers, strive to be the person that either the media or journalists, you know, or experts come to you for information on a particular topic that you are known for. Can you type in the comments there, what are you known for? What do, what will people come to you to ask you questions about? What are you known for? Can you also type in there? Because when you start sharing, you know, news and information um, that you feel is, 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 is useful to your audience, and you start sending all that information to your mailing list, you become valuable. And only valuable people are remembered. But unless you're just a, um, you know, a, a one click wonder that just came in because you wanted to sell something. Yeah, because you can't sell anything or convince anything to anyone who is not paying direct attention to you. All right. So, you know, if you are not um, viewed as a trusted authority in your industry or if you're not viewed as a trusted source of information you won't be able to attract a lot of people to you out of sight out of mind give people a reason to talk about you give people snippets of what to share to their people at a barbecue or whatever um you know event they're gonna be at you know and billy says for sure thank you so much for tuning in all right and once once you've cracked the code, you want to make sure that you deliver and you develop a strong value proposition. What makes you stand apart from everybody else who's splouting or who is saying the same story as you? Because with every industry or every um, you know, niche or whatever uh, section of the market you might be, 
If you don't have a unique proposition or a unique standpoint, you just become part of the system. You just become yet another cog in the machine. So what makes you a different person, business person, or somebody that they really want to do business with? What makes you attractive to your potential clients? All of that, you should craft it within your own personal brand. All right? All of these things that I'm talking about, you have to make sure they're part and parcel of who you're going to be in 2018 if you really want to survive. Because now we're living in a mobile first environment. So people actually anticipate that you know their name, you know their needs, you can justify their failures, you can encourage their dreams, you're confirming their suspicions about whatever is happening within the market then, you ally with their fears, and you're actually helping them throw rocks at their enemies. If you're not doing that, you're just making a lot of noise, brother. All right? And once you've got all of this established, all right, Make sure your audience knows that they can get all of this from you. And that's where your personal brand comes in. All right. So how many people are going to start crafting their personal brand in 2018? If you are going to be crafting your personal brand in 2018, just type in branding. So that I know who to look out for and how to actually work with you so that I can help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Which is my main belief because there's no point in you going at it online and not enjoying what you're doing and not actually making a profit at it. That's why I'm here. All right. I'm not begging you to work with me. I just want to make sure that you're doing it right and you're not frustrating yourself and your customers in the process. Yeah. Yeah. And in the process, like I always say, guys, hey, Duncan Musak, Gunjan Bambo, hey, um, it's uh, Sean Bless's birthday today. When we embed a message, all right, in whatever you're going to be doing, give back. Because the more you give, the more you get to keep. Look at what just happened right now. I gave away 30 minutes of my time. Guess what's going to happen? Somebody's going to share this. Somebody's going to rewind this and actually start taking notes. Had I spent this time in my office, would anyone benefit from this? So the more you give, the more you get to keep. And that's how people get to spread your message. Because once they start sharing it, it becomes a ripple effect. Have you ever seen a U-Haul? I mean, a, a, a hearse, you know, pulling a U-Haul? I don't think so. Because you die. And once you die, you don't take with you everything that you, you bought for yourself. What you get to keep is what they say about you on the eulogy. So give back. That's what personal branding really is. In actual fact, I want to challenge you. I want you to actually write your own obituaries. And guess what that will do? When you write your own obituaries, you will now live up to them. You won't ha get to hear them, but at least they would say something. That you've lived up to. That then becomes your own personal brand. When you leave it, it becomes authentic. And people can see it from a mile away. It's not forced. It's just authentic. It becomes who you are. A part of you. And then you don't have to try. And when you can sustain yourself over and over and over again, people will start noticing you. And when you do give back, Good day, Corin. How's it going, my man? You know? I mean, besides, you know, you feeling good and giving uh, personal, um, you know, satisfaction or helping other people, you know, giving back can actually help you build your personal brand. Because once you start giving, people can't get that from anyone else. Your time, your knowledge, your, ed your, 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 your passion or whatever it is that you're giving, they can't Google that. They can't get that anywhere else. Give. And that would start creating your own obituaries. Maybe you could volunteer your time. Maybe whatever it is that's important to you, give off of that. And the more you give, the more... Because the universe hates a void. Because if you give, there's now an empty space of that thing that you've given. The universe would want to replace that. Have you ever seen an empty space in the universe? If it's at the beach, it's filled with water or sand... If it's, the, you know, the environment is filled with air, there's just got to be something filling a void. The universe hates a void. So the more you give, the more you actually get to receive. 
And the more you are crafting your personal brand in the process. People always remember selfless acts. But all those things that you do in order for you to, um, you know, make yourself feel good, just give off of that. And you become the source of all the things that you want. Because if you are giving away money or time, it tells you that you have the money, that you have the time, and you no longer have a scarcity mindset. All right? All right, so I've given off of my 30 minutes today. The rest of the 24 hours, can I can use them whichever way I, I can, but I've captured the essence of me today in this show, and I really, really thank you for being a part of it. So if you really want to, you can also help me by giving this to somebody and gifting this video either in a DM or either in a, in, 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 in a short monologue or just leaving me a testimonial that how this you know message that I left you with today has helped you shape what your 2018 is going to look like. All right. I really, really want you to win. You have no idea. Unless you don't want to and you don't see the passion that I have in order for you to be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, then I can't help you. But if you're really, really serious and taking this thing head on, just reach out. All right. We're only just getting started. In the meantime, um, Luke says what you saw is what you reap. If you give your knowledge, etc. Cool. Uh, thank you, Prosper. Thank you, Tom, for tuning in. Nicole, what is the name of the app you use to stay on top of your schedule? Nicole, I keep giving you this. It's called Time Spread. All right. It's called Time Spread. Figure it out and then it should um, help you be on top of your schedule. But in the meantime, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for the love. Thank you so much for helping me build my personal brand. And I want to do the same to you as well. All right. All the people that you care about. So share this video. Share this video right now. If not, thank you so much. I will see you guys tomorrow. And don't forget Q&A's on Friday, 2 p.m. AEST. Get ready with your questions. You can start asking me now so that I can answer them, um, you know, prior or at, um, you know, during the show. Monday, I mean, Monday to Thursday is the normal, um, you know, uh, content. And then Friday, 2 p.m. AEST, that's when we're talking um, question and answers. So uh, don't be bloated with questions. I'm always here to help you out. Look, my man, thank you so much for the love. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and the week. If you've got any questions, let a brother know. Bye for now.